Hey everybody, this is Grant Sims at Chief River Security. I uh, just wanted to take a quick video here to show you how to obtain tokens from an Okta authorization server via the um, authorization code flow. Uh, so just real quick, a couple components here. If you want the full environment, come over here um, to my Chief River GitHub repo and pull down the Okta OAuth POC. I already have some of the parts running. You can check out my previous video to see the full demo. Um, so with that, we have a couple components here. Um, within Okta, we have our client application, uh, which is assigned a couple users. Uh, this is our um, OIDC application, which will be performing the authorization code flow. Uh, we also have an authorization server stood up. Once again, if you pull down the uh, POC environment on my repo, you can set this all up via just a Terraform um, apply. We'll be interacting with this authorization server right here. And last but not least, we have just a local resource um, that is running. So let's get that going as well. This is just some simple node um, code that is pulling in uh, or is accepting JWT tokens at uh, localhost 3000, pointing to an authorization server for authorization checking those tokens and returning just a simple 200 of the, val of the token contents. So let's get going. In order to set this up, we, we have Postman here. We want to do OAuth 2.0. If we're acting as a developer, we're coming in here, we want to get some tokens with our username and password. Um, so after you've selected OAuth 2.0, come down here, give it a, whatever token name you would like. The grant type we're gonna be doing is authorization code with PKCE, proof key exchange. Um, the first thing we need to set is our call, call, callback URL. Um, switching back over to Okta here, we can look at our client application, which is for our resource developers one here, and we can see what we've configured as the sign in redir redirect URL. So now that we have that, we can copy and paste that callback URL in here. Next, we need the authorization URL. So this will, we will obtain from our authorization server. So coming back over here, most of the information you'll get or need from an authorization server can come from the metadata URI, uh, which is also commonly known as the well-known endpoint. So the first thing we need is the authorization endpoint. We can copy this URL right here and then paste it into our Postman. After we've got the authorized URL, now we need the token URL. Um, so flipping back over to Okta, we would grab the token endpoint here, grab this URL and paste it in right there. Client ID and secret. Now this is talking about the client application, which is our resource one developer client application that we set up in Okta. So going back over to Okta, we're on our um, client application here once again, and we need to pull down the client ID and the client secret. We need to copy both of those, paste them in um, to the corresponding uh, values here. Next, challenge mode, SHA-256. Scopes, um, I'm putting in here, uh, you know, open ID as well as some other common OIDC scopes that are provided, as well as some custom ones that are set up as part of the POC environment just to show some other techniques like injecting the employee info, such as an employee ID into an access token. State, we're just gonna set um, something, which in this case, simple state. And then you need to change this to send client credentials in the body in order to interact with an Okta authorization server. So now that we have everything set, let's go get an access token, perform the authorization code flow via the built-in browser in Postman and get some tokens. So you can see it's reaching out to our um, Okta IDP. It's reaching out as the resource developers one client application. I have to provide the username and password as would a developer. These are statically set within the POC code just for ease. So um, come in here, grab a user, copy, copy that, copy the password. Paste that in. And we got tokens. Um, so you can see we were returned an access token as well as a ID token. So um, 
we send access tokens to resource servers. So let's take our access token and send it to our local host resource uh, just to validate the token. So we'll come back over here to authorization. Now that we perform the code flow, we just want to uh, send a request um, as a bearer token. So we're gonna take the bearer token, we're gonna imp input our access token we were just given, and we're gonna send that to localhost 3000. Once we send it, you can see that the token is valid and it just returns the info from the token itself. If we go back over to the actual server or resource running, you can see that um, that request is replicated here. You can see where we interacted with it, it returned the information. If you want to dig a little deeper and just see the contents of each of those tokens, you can go back uh, to your tokens that you've been granted. So let's pull this down. We can go look at our available tokens. Let's manage some tokens. Let's go grab this. We can take uh, you know, the access token. We already saw the contents of that. Let's take the ID token. Um, ID tokens, as a reminder, are meant for your client application. So you would never send this to a resource, but your client application uh, might want to utilize this for authentication and pull things out such as uh, your name or your profile picture and so forth. So let's paste this in here. Uh, you can go to JWTIO to inspect JWT tokens. Um, and looking at the payload here, you can see in the ID token, we have things such as name, email, uh, who issued it, uh, etc. cetera. Um, so with that information, uh, you know, hopefully you could see how you can uh, interact with an authorization server, get access tokens via the authorization code flow um, as a, you know, uh, an OIDC application in Okta, and then send those to a, a resource. If you have any comments or questions, uh, please reach out and everyone have a great rest of your day.